Hi all, it's um, 30th of September 2020 and today's video is about fleeing idolatry before your idols are taken from you. Uh, the scripture here is 1 Corinthians 10 14 Therefore my beloved, flee from idolatry. And um, BB Ed, if you're listening, there, there's 10 14 as your conf confirmation. And anything at all can become an idol once it becomes a substitute for God. So um, I felt led to share about idolatry after watching a video um, about Kobe Bryant that someone received uh, about where he is now. Um, uh, when I was first awakening in 2016-2017, one thing the Lord gave me uh, was a warning about idolatry. I received a flash flash dream before awakening of my two sons playing basketball, which they both love, and um, and then I heard idol. And so when I received that, I had a word with my boys about uh, letting, letting basketball become an idol to them. And just to be careful and, and talk them about about this lesson. And also, when I was beginning to uh, awaken, uh, after recommitting for about, I must have been about a year, I recommitted and fully submitted to God and recommitted again after being a prodigal for almost 20 years. Um, and my mother wasn't quite aware of this, uh, what was going on, but she received a vision of her and I and uh, she saw golden discs uh, falling falling down um, from above us and the gold discs represent uh, treasures from heaven and she didn't know at that time that I had um, made a decision to turn away from the world and that my my treasures were not on this earth it was not um, things that could rust and get eaten by moths but the, my treasure was now becoming uh, heavenly treasures. So, um, and at that time also, um, God was teaching me about uh, sp spiritual faithfulness versus spiritual idolatry and, ad and adultery and being um, a pure and faithful bride for Jesus. So, so it's a very important lesson that we must turn away from all our idols and uh, put Jesus as number one in our lives and in our hearts. We must put him upon the throne of our hearts. And um, if people, if they continue to put the world first, if they continue to put um, their careers, money, nice homes and cars, their wardrobe, all the things with the flesh and the things of the world and their own worldly desires first before God, then as a day draws closer and we're already here in the tribulation and the great tribulation, these things are going to be taken away from us so that we will put God first and know that he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. So... Um, I will play this video that I watched that led me to uh, share about idolatry and um, I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to, to everyone who is led to watch this. God bless. What's up YouTube? How you doing man? This is my praise. And um, I got something I want to talk to you about finally. I want to talk to you about. I'm going to talk about all the guy that showed me about uh, Kobe Bryant, uh, God showed me some things about, I've been watching some videos of some, you know, the young young men that get killed in Chicago. Man, God showed me. Well, people who live by the gun, well, I don't say people, I just got about them young men up there, and he showed me about them. So, I'm going to tell you what I saw about them. I was trying to figure out I do a uh, separate video, but I'm going to put it all in one. And I'm going to tell you about Kobe Bryant's daughter, what i seen. Okay. I'm going to start with a young man 
that live by God in Chicago. First, let me pray. Father, I pray unto you that I will get no interruption on Kobo this year. And I pray, Lord God, that you will let, you will speak through me and you get the honor and glory. And I pray that these people will understand what I'm saying. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I was looking up, you know, I, I always, I, I used to look up a lot of videos, not a lot, but some videos about, you know, rappers when got killed and the gun violence in Chicago and things like that. So it always, always intrigued me that I always think, do people realize, you know, about when they die, the afterlife? When they die, where, where are they going? I always thought, I always thought about that. Like when I was in the world, even though I was a heathen, I always, I always wondered. I always knew that there was a God. And even though I didn't love him or knew, know him, I knew of him. And uh, I've seen spiritual things too, which had me scared and knew that there was a hell too. And I, I never, I didn't know if God ever showed them young men things like that. And I didn't know if they got a warning like I did, you know, because I always just think about that. Because I'm like, you, you living like that. But I guess I was the same way. It's just, it's sad that they died. And, and I look at it like I could have died too back then. I really did. Like, I, it just, I can't explain it. So I, about that, I don't even want to talk about that because I've become extremely grateful to God at the same time. He's like, I could have been one of those young men who died and went to hell. I could have. But all the more, I thank God for saving me. That's, I can't even say nothing. Hell is not my home. Hell is not my home. I don't care what I did in the past. If Jesus saved me, I accept it. That's all I can say about it. And I'm glad that I answered the call. So I asked God, where do those young men go that live like that? So God showed me the place where the young men who live by the gun in Chicago, and he was just uh, showing me about those, those young men. I'm sure a lot of people live by the gun, but he was just showing me the specific prayer I prayed. So that night, I went to bed, and I found myself. Everything I do, I, when I go to sleep, God always showing me things, bad things, good things. And I, I was on a street corner. I remember seeing like a building, just one building. And all around me was young boys running back and forth, back and forth running with complete fear in their eyes. There was nobody talking to one another and there were gunshots going off everywhere you turn. And I pondered, I thought about that. I'm like, how is that? What you do on this earth for God or for the devil? Hell is formed. Your personal hell, which every, you understand, hell is a place, but what you did in your life, that determines what torment you're going to get. And as the Lord lives, I saw it, and I was in the middle of it because I'm trying to figure out what was going on. I saw young men running with terror in their eyes, back and forth, ducking and dodging and shooting guns at one another, get shot in the head, get shot in the chest, and still feel the pain that they felt. But you cannot die. And for some reason, they could not stop shooting one another. You know how you can just get to a point like, okay, we need to quit. It ain't none of that. Because in each and every one of those young men, that one and that one is trying to kill me. And I'm trying to kill you before you kill me. And they cannot stop having that thought. They cannot stop having the thought that somebody trying to kill them. And I'm going to kill you before you kill me. So they, they, it's a non-stop thing. It, it, it never ends. And it is not fun. They ain't having fun. I promise you. One young man, I don't know who he was. All I know God allowed me. That one young man ran up to me. And he just, he turned the corner. I mean running like fast like they could not get in this place with dark it was just this one building and there was nothing else outside it was just darker and it was just all running in and out of this darkness and around this building and shooting one another and and, and ducking and dodging it looked like a street corner like it did there was the most weird thing i ever seen in my life and i was in the middle i'm thinking i'm gonna get shot so i'm trying to duck then i realized i ain't getting shot and i realized these young men died living by the gun now they're in hell forever you got it there are many parts of hell you gotta understand this. There are many parts of hell. All of it separate, and there was there is no God there. There's no sun there. There's no moon, no star. It's complete darkness. I saw, I don't know if they running in the light in darkness, but I had a little light. Maybe it, I don't know if it was a portrayed with this street light or whatever, but I had a little light. Maybe it was just God, the light of God showing me around me. Because it was just a small little light. And I could just I could see boys running in. <laughs> and it, it was it was horrible. Like it was like a horrible something you can't they still doing it right now. Those young men still doing it. When they need to take their last breath, they end up in that place. And you gotta understand they leave with the same mentality. Even worse, there's no Holy Spirit, there's no God in them. You gotta understand on earth you gotta change. But in hell, you are completely you come terror you become terrorized. And so you gotta understand only fear is in them. 
only. If you were able to smile on earth, then there's God. But ain't no smiling down. It's only fear that grips them. And my next one I want to talk to you about is Kobe Bryant. Now, I asked the Lord. I said, God, where did this man go? He seemed to do great things on earth. You got the uh, Mamba place in California with teaching young men and talking to him. They say he went to church Sunday. He was a Catholic. You know, all these things go through my head. Like, did he believe Jesus Christ was Son of God or did what he believe? All I can tell you, I'm going to tell you the honest. I'm going to tell you the truth. I asked the Lord God, where did Kobe Bryant go? Kobe Bryant, what you don't know about him, he dedicated his life to that sport. Everything. He loved basketball. He wanted to be the greatest. To be honest, he was better than Michael Jordan. He was the greatest. He wanted to be the best. I went to sleep after I prayed that prayer. Every time I prayed prayers, and God waits his time for me to obey. In hell, there is no God. I don't I want you to understand where there is God, there is peace and liberty. In hell, there is no God. There is no peace. There is no spirit of God. You got to understand. I found myself in a gym. In a best, with a basketball on the floor. As the Lord lives, I know I'm not making this stuff up. The man. The man is in a gym. Which is his own personal hell. You say he was a Catholic. He went to church. Listen, man. I don't care. Catholics, first of all, don't believe Jesus Christ is God. They believe Mary is the Holy Mary. They don't believe that. And I don't know. All I know is this. I pray that prayer and that man is there. He is in this gym. I felt nothing. It's like, you got to understand what you're doing in earth, you're going to do it in heaven or in hell. You understand, he, he, what God was showing, telling me about that. I'm like, God, what do that mean? Kobe Bryant knew about Jesus. He had done great things. But Kobe Bryant wasn't, in other words, with Jesus. Like, Kobe Bryant put that sport over God. It's like, that's what he did. You can go to church. You can be a Catholic. And if you are a Catholic, you need to come out of there. Because that ain't no Jesus. And he's not even saying he went to church for all that, that Sunday that morning. But I don't care if he went to church. I'm going to tell you the truth. Kobe Bryant loved that sport more than God. He did. Kobe Bryant loved that sport more than God. And he in a gym. But he ain't playing no basketball. It's a place where there's no... There's no there's no reason that you you understand when I was there and I looked around and I knew he was there somewhere. The man is in a dog on it, like a hell made gym where there's no God, no people, no devil. I saw stand, I saw a basketball, but he was there. Sad as a mug, forever lost, trapped. You think it's a joke, you think that's impossible. You gotta understand the way you live your life here. You either live it there or there. All I know is this: the man is there. The man is in hell, man. The man is in hell. Hurry, man, I can't lie. He's in hell. Kobe Bryant is in hell. That's a sad thing to say. And I'm going to speak about his daughter. Um, I'll put a link to the full 20-minute video for you. And another thing is regarding idols is that... Um, other things such as people, relationships, and even your own ministry can become an idol in your heart. So we must always be uh, self-examining and, and reflecting on these things and seeking the Lord always and always putting Him first in our life every morning, committing our day to Him and submitting all our ways to Him every morning. 
And um, if you do hear Jesus calling you, don't ignore him and don't reject him because he'll only call you so many times. Um, and if you don't, and it, it is his will and your destiny to be um, saved, then you'll need a, a greater stripping away in the wheat harvest where everything will be taken away from you. Um, and if you would like to give your life to Jesus, there's a prayer here for you. Um, and you can say it along and say it with your whole heart and accept Jesus as your personal saviour and he is the bridge that will uh, reconcile you back to a, rela a relationship with the Father. I hope this blesses you in Jesus' name.